Hello friends of La Rebre Community Television. Welcome to another of our conversations. Today with two very special guests, Shari in Iceland of the Women's Freedom Center. We are going to talk about a very special event that will be happening in Brattleboro very soon. Shari in Iceland, welcome. And let's start with Shari. Hello, Sherry. How are you? I'm doing well, Maria. Thanks for having us. Tell us about this very special event. So it is that time of year again. Um, we're so excited about the 20 and 28th annual Women's Film Festival happening from March 22nd through the 30th here in Rattleboro. And these are films from around the world directed by and about women. Uh, and there's something here for everyone, as there is every year. This year we have 35 different films, feature lengths, drama, comedy, action. Uh, and this is the longest running women's film festival in New England, so we're really excited. And so for folks who maybe aren't as familiar, this is one of the most beloved fundraisers of the Women's Freedom Center. And the Women's Freedom Center is the domestic and sexual violence resource organization for Wyndham and Southern Windsor counties. And we are now 45 years strong and um, we're not that unique. Around the country there are still just under 2,000 similar programs working to end domestic and sexual violence. And um, we also always want to let our community know that we are, even though we still have part of our original grassroots name, we used to be the Women's Crisis Center, we're committed to supporting survivors of all genders who've experienced domestic or sexual violence of any kind. So we are a resource in this community, and part of our fundraisers, including this wonderful film festival, um, our fundraisers are always an, a direct extension of our work, and in this case, it's shining a spotlight on not only showcasing the creativity of women artists and women filmmakers. These are phenomenal films, but we also want to highlight one of the reasons we have this film festival is um, to underscore the fact that for all of the progress that we've made in our culture, women filmmakers still account for less than 10% of the films that we see every year, and that as Americans, um, we export around the world. So most films and most of the ways that we're taught about our world still come from very much a white, straight, male perspective and also very much a Western perspective. And we're here to debunk that, um, that notion that only men's stories are universally interesting. This is a chance to see some amazing films from around the world about every topic, every human topic under the sun, and we invite everybody um, to the audience of the film festival. So the only reason it's called a Women's Film Festival is that's who's behind the camera for a change, but everyone is welcome to come, um, learn at this festival, laugh at this festival, um, get inspired by this festival. So it's a really a festival for everyone. Mm, thank you, Sherry. That's exciting. In Iceland, tell us more about the Women's Film Festival. Well, the entire festival is happening in uh, Brattleboro at New England Youth Theatre um, starting on March 22nd. That's a Friday night with our big uh, opening night kickoff gala, which should be really exciting. Um, our theme this year is uh, women in the culinary industry. It um, centers around the film that we're showing called The Heat, A Kitchen Revolution. Um, and we're featuring actually 11 local chefs and bakers um, from around Wyndham and Southern Windsor counties, um, our service area. So it's going to be really exciting. They're providing food. Um, we're going to have a reception with them. And then everyone's going to go into the theater and watch the opening night film. Um, so that's, that's the first event in the festival that I wanted to tell you about. Tickets are $40, and they're on sale online at Everyone's Books and at the door the night of the event. And Iceland, tell us again the title of the opening film. And without giving too much away, also talk a little bit about it. Uh, yes, it's called The Heat, A Kitchen Revolution. Um, and it's a documentary about uh, seven uh, women in the competitive um, cooking industry. Uh, they have different restaurants and different roles in that. It's, it's a really entertaining film. We were really excited to be able to get it. We actually had uh, some sponsor support from an anonymous donor and uh, Chroma Technology just to make it possible for us to show the film and have the event. So um, a lot of people are really looking forward to it because it hasn't shown in our area at all. Yeah, 
That's we, fantastic. Okay. We say, um, we encourage people, whether they come, you know, dressed up if they want to or casual if they want to, do come hungry because this is <laughs> going to be a wonderful, um, just a feast really for film lovers and for foodies alike. So we're really excited. And sorry, I'm interested in knowing how the Me Too movement has influenced the work of the Women's Freedom Center? It's a great question, Romia. So absolutely, we are now, I mean, obviously, the work and the activism to try to um, dismantle rape culture is much older than Me Too. Um, and women of color have, have always taken a leading role in that activism around the world and around the U.S. as well, um, including the Me Too movement, which kind of unofficially is about um, a year and a half old, but also goes back a decade. Um, but yes, absolutely that activism informs all the work of the Women's Freedom Center, including the Women's Film Festival. Uh, and so there, you know, there has been movement even in um, the film industry because of uh, the many, you know, outspoken um, members of Hollywood about, you know, that as a workplace in and of itself, having like horrendous stories of sexual harassment um, and rape happening within the industry. Um, there have been outspoken activists within Hollywood and that has had a rippling effect around the culture to help support other survivors um, coming to speak out about their workplaces. We know this can happen everywhere. Um, but we also know that it's hugely significant to shine a spotlight on Hollywood and, and recognize that it's such a, the film industry is such a defining force in our culture. So if not only this is happening behind the scenes in those workplaces to these actors, um, but they're the ones telling the stories to the culture, it has an enormous impact, right, on the kind of media that we see. And it's, it, it creates a sexist template that the rest of the world then lives with. So there's been, you know, the, the Time's Up movement, which is helping to support all survivors of sexual violence. There's also a Time's Up movement in the film industry that's wanting to pressure big studios and producers, Hollywood money holders and gatekeepers, um, that's trying to pressure them to hire more female filmmakers. And one of the reasons we are delighted to host this film festival every year is Again, recognizing that fewer than 10% of filmmakers around the world are women. And that needs to change. And so Time's Up, part of the Me Too movement, is pressuring um, studios and decision makers to hire more, not just directors, female directors, but behind the scenes too, people creating the creative content for the most part are the same demographic as there have been for generations. And that needs to change because you know, even a hundred years ago, when the film industry was a new art form, women had more creative input into that industry a hundred years ago than they do today. So there, there's continued to be radical underrepresentation of female artists, female voices, female filmmakers in all roles, and that needs to change. And so Me Too has been a galvanizing influence across the board in our work, in the film industry, etc. And that's Awesome. And Sherry, how the Me Too movement have impacted the educational work of the Women's Freedom Center in relation to not only women, but also the LGBTQ community? Um, that really is always the ongoing question for us in, in terms of how we do the crisis, the direct crisis work, and work with survivors, which we do 24-7, but we want to try to uproot this cycle from repeating, and so one of the ways, we, we have um, a youth outreach advocate that does wonderful work in the school systems with kids of all ages, all the way through the whole academic sphere, including colleges, um, and then we do community outreach in all different kinds of realms. So we go into workplaces, we offer bystander empowerment trainings um, to help un end sexual harassment in the workplace. We're gonna host one of those for community members at large at the library in the end of April. Folks can find out more by giving us a call. 
Our office number for any questions, including about the film festival, our office number is 257-7364. So there are a lot of ways not only to um, participate in these conversations, we obviously don't have all the answers, but for people to also participate in our work and join us and get more active in terms of volunteering and their own activism. So we welcome that if folks have questions or ideas for them to give us a call. Um, so that number again is 257-7364. So we talk about the hotline number the Women's Crisis Center has available. Absolutely. So this is um, completely free, completely confidential crisis hotline staffed 24 hours a day, and that is 254-6954. And what can be helpful for folks to know, again, we support all survivors. They don't even have to give us their real name if they don't want to. But an advocate is available 24-7 to provide up-to-the-minute crisis support, options, resources, and the most vital thing of all, safety planning, individual safety planning for what a survivor may be experiencing in that moment. Sherry, and the Women's Freedom Center works with law enforcement? We work with all systems that a survivor might encounter for safety's sake. Um, we honor the wishes of any individual survivor. Not all survivors want to or ch you know, need to go the route of involving law enforcement. Sometimes they do or sometimes that's already in motion and we will be advocates for them and with them if they ask us to and that can mean um, helping them navigate these systems if ever there are challenges, whether it's the law enforcement, you know, the court system, the hospital, um, any of those systems, we also can, can respectfully push back and advocate sort of on their behalf. So we work with any system a survivor might need some help with. I'm so glad that we have this very important outfit here in town, the Women's Freedom Center, that not only serves the greater Brattleboro area, can you tell us more about how far out is um, the services of the Women Freedom Center extended? Yes, yeah, so we are um, the organization for Wyndham and Southern Windsor County. So we also have, we have a number of confidential sites, including one um, as far north as Springfield and the whole area in between. So we're the local resource. Yep. Nicely. Yep. Nicely. And if folks aren't sure, we also sometimes get calls from people who aren't necessarily quite sure what their local program is. They can call us. We have all the phone numbers that they might need. And if we are not the closest program to them, we can tell them that too and make sure that they can talk with the closest advocate to them that can help them. That's very good. Thank you, Sherry. So let's go back to the event <laughs> and the Women's Film Festival. And I understand it's directed by women. Mm -hmm. So the Women's Film Festival is actually especially important because it's one of the ways that we help fund this work. So um, it's a fundraiser for this work. It's been going on for 28 years. And um, what I really love about the organization is that the fundraisers also are part of the programming in, in a way. So we don't do fundraisers that are outside of the messaging that we really care about and we find important. Um, so that's why these are women directors telling women's stories, and that's part of celebrating women in, in the world and women's contributions to society and things like that. So um, when you come to the festival, you're buying a ticket, and that is actually directly impacting, once we pay for the cost of the festival, the work that Sherry was just talking about. Um, so our gala is a fundraiser for that, and as are ticket prices for this. Um, and, and tickets are available there, um, $10 for a generous ticket purchase, uh, $9 regular or $8 reduced admission if people need that option. Great. How about um, remind us of the dates so again? Um, okay. Um, the dates, so the film festival is taking place the last two weekends in March, um, starting with the kickoff gala on Friday night, March 22nd. And then we have films all day on Saturday, March 23rd, and Sunday, March 24th. Um, then we go to the next weekend, the final weekend in March. Films will be Friday, March 29th, and Saturday, March 30th. And all the films will be shown at the New England Youth Theater, right? Yes, everything is taking place at the New England Youth Theater in Brattleboro. In the hours? 
Um, well, we have multiple films throughout the day. So on Saturday and Sunday, uh, films are at 12 p.m., 2 p.m., 4 p.m., 6 p.m., and 8 p.m. And on Friday nights, it's 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. And I think what's helpful is um, folks can also find the program, the film descriptions, watch trailers on our, our website, and that's womensfilmfestival.org. And the schedule's on there as well, right? So they can check that out, and obviously any questions, they also can give us a call. Yeah. All the information. That's great. So, but uh, you have a program, and people can uh, find programs where? All over town, right? We're going to make sure they're distributed. There'll also always be some at the New England Youth Theater, so folks coming to the first film can take one from there. But they're going to be distributed everywhere. Again, folks can get online, um, and lots of local uh, businesses are having some like on their counter, so they should be readily findable. Yes, so the library, the yep. bookstores. Uh, Brattleboro Co-op um, oh. has them near the newspapers. So if oh. you're sitting in the cafe at the Brattleboro <laughs> Co-op, you can get a program there. They're also um, one of the sponsors of the festival this year as well. Um, and also Everyone's Books is selling uh, both gala passes and uh, film festival five movie passes. So they also have brochures there and at the library as well in Brattleboro. Okay, wonderful. Now about the films. I liked some of them. Well, two that particularly struck me um, because of the sort of historic span of them. Um, uh, one of them is called Ask for Jane, and it actually is based on a true story, and this is um, 1969 Chicago, a time before the landmark Supreme Court case, Roe v. Wade made abortion legal in 1973. So a few years before that in 1969, there was a group of um, incredibly inspired college students that created their own not only hotline with nothing to base that on, right? They kind of made this up from scratch, this kind of activism. Um, and then also a network to get women who needed abortions to safe places where they could do that while it was still illegal. And even though it's um, a, dram a dramatization, it's based on a true story, and even though we now know sort of how things play out, it still is so suspenseful and so inspiring, these activist, amazing women in the early women's movement, or sort of that civil rights era of the women's movement. So it's, um, yeah, it's just a, an amazingly um, inspiring film about things that we maybe take for granted that we know that story. There's just so much more to it. And then another one to kind of bookend that is a super current film called Netizens. And it's about, and it's like citizens, except citizens on the net. And it really highlights um, kind of the, the way that sexism and misogyny just kind of morphs into the next arena. And so in the digital internet world, when women try to speak out, the backlash that they get and the trolling and the um, the sexual harassment and even the death threats that women activists get online um, has become an increasing problem in the wider world and it, it's, you know, it's, you can directly draw arrows from the kind of work we do with individual survivors whose batterers use technology to stalk and harass and scare them to these women's activists that are experiencing it from anonymous strangers on the internet. So the two of them, you know, to look at this historic Ask for Jane, abortion um, rights film, and then women's free speech rights being curtailed by fear, and for these both to make it in to the same festival, it just shows the, the span any one year of just the, the quality of the storytelling and the content. It's so rich. There's literally a story of, you know, so many different aspects of human interest and human lives. There's really something here for everyone. And who are the directors? The director, so Ask for Jane, the director is Rachel Carey. And again, folks can watch the trailer for that online. And then Netizens, Cynthia Lowen is the director. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we also have a lot of films from all different topics. So there are some that are about serious pressing issues that are really important in our time. And then there are also um, lighthearted romantic comedies like um, In Reality is a film of that kind. Um, directed by Anne Lupo, and it's actually based on her own story of 
looking for love and not finding it and having what she describes as a, uh, a crisis that led to a downward, downward spiral. And so it's a really fun film. Um, Sherry and I were actually just recently talking about how different it can be sometimes to see a movie like a romantic comedy um, that features a woman in love from the woman's actual perspective instead of a man talking about what it's like for a woman to be in love. So there are even some fun, um, almost even sexy scenes in it where she's kind of doing a burlesque dance with some feathers. But the way that that's portrayed versus sometimes when it's directed by uh, male directors or other people like that, it's, it's very different. So it's, it's interesting, but it's also that's a really fun film that I'm excited about too. Um, and yeah, and just running the gamut of topics, and uh, and there we also the format is that um, we show a short film uh, before a feature length film. So with each ticket, you come in and you see a short that's also been selected because it's really quality um, film, and then so you'll get both for the same ticket. So if you're interested in any of the 35, you can see which two are happening at the same time and go and see those. One other one that I think is worth plugging because I think it's such a universal issue um, is called My Big White Thighs and Me, <laughs> which just even the spunkiness of that title struck me. And it's just this really beautiful, heartfelt um, exploration on behalf of this filmmaker about her own um, body, um, sort of comfort level with her own body and how that's impacted by our mainstream media culture and her own self-liberation from that. And she does all this by filming herself as she's getting increasingly more pregnant and just wanting to embrace what her body is capable of, how she feels in her body, and just being out in nature. And so she spends this chunk of time, um, even in winter, diving into open bodies of water and swimming for a few minutes and it's um, it's heartfelt, it's wise, it's funny, it's playful, it's just such a feel-good movie and you know my sense is that um, body image issues in our you know media saturated culture don't just impact women and girls though of course overwhelmingly they do they impact all humans potentially and this is one of these inspiring movies that um, kind of turns that on its head and it's empowering for anybody I think to watch so there are lots of sweet films like that sprinkled throughout the lineup and we encourage people just to spend a couple minutes um, on womensfilmfestival.org site and click on some of these trailers and see what sparks their own curiosity there's a lot there and tell us again how many films are showing in this festival. 35. Wow, that's great. In Iceland, you also have some films you want to tell us about. And we have films from all over the world this year, well, every year, but this year especially. Um, another film that I really am excited about is called Rafiki. Um, it's a Kenyan film from a, a lesbian Kenyan director, and it was actually banned in Kenya because homosexuality is uh, legal there. So she made this incredible film, and it won awards in film festivals, and there was actually an international pressure to lift this ban um, to allow the film to be shown in Kenya, where uh, the director's from and where the characters are starring. Um, the interesting thing about that is the director was saying that if she was told that she needed to make the love scene um, more G-rated, she would have, but it's not an explicit scene at all. It's just kind of a, a sweet story about two girls in love um, in, set in the background of their culture and um, there's a lot of music and color and it's just a fun film. Um, but the problem, they said, wasn't that there was anything explicit. The problem was just that it showed happiness. It, it showed lesbians who were happy. So <laughs> there was a lot of pushback on that, but fortunately the ban was lifted um, for two weeks and they allowed the film to show in her home country, and we're going to have it in the festival this year. So it should be a wonderful showing. It's on. Um, uh, let's. That film is showing on Sunday, the 24th at 8 p.m. Um, and we also have another amazing film from India called Love Sick. Um, it highlights the uh, doctor, it, the female doctor, who first discovered the HIV virus. 25 years ago in India. And the interesting part about that is she's now a matchmaker for some of the patients that she has um, you know, uh, been treating for HIV because uh, arranged marriage is such a thing in the culture that she's from and she talks about that. And so she wants to make sure that everyone can find love 
and that's why the film's called Love Sick. Um, so that's just another one that should be a really wonderful showing that's happening on March 30th at 2 p.m. So it's an international film festival it's also, because women from all over the world have been showcasing this film festival. Yes, it's definitely an international film festival with women from all over the world telling their stories. And the festival runs from? March 22nd to March 30th at New England Youth Theatre in Brattleboro. Yep, and one other thing I will add is that, you know, we always underline that um, it's a women's film festival because that's who's behind the camera here for a change, but it's a festival for everyone. We invite all genders, all um, humans are welcome in the audience for these films. And I would say male allies in particular, it's a great chance to show solidarity with the women and girls in their lives, with women and girls in the world. And as Island mentioned, like every ticket is actually a vote for social justice because it directly funds our crisis work that's happening 24 hours a day, year round. Mm -hmm. And I also just really wanted to thank everyone who comes to the Film Fest every year. I mean, it's been happening for 28 years, and a lot, a lot of the reason that's been possible is because people in the community come out and watch the films, you know, some back-to-back, -back, buy film festival passes, um, come to the gala, and we have so many local business sponsors that make it possible as well, so we just really thank them, and we're just so glad because this film festival is really a labor of love <laughs> for the community, and so many people have been involved in it over the years, so I'm honored just to be a part of it, and I'm so glad that it happens for the Women's Freedom Center. Now let's watch some trailers from the Women's Film Festival in Shari and Aisling, thank you so much for being here today at Brattleboro Community Television to talk about the 28th Annual Women's Film Festival of 2019. Thank you, Maria. What happened? I was lying on my bed and I saw her go in my drawer and take a razor. Well, I needed a razor. At five in the morning? You did this on purpose. You really think I would do this on purpose? So get an abortion. The mob charges like $3,000. My cousin had one and she almost died. I told you to come alone into the back. If we had any other friends that needed this, can we give you a call? I don't want to see any of you ever again. What if we had women call my dorm room? It would be anonymous. I could explain about the doctor and what to do and stuff. It'd only be a couple of calls a year, right? <clears throat> this is Jane. We are going to create a service so that any woman who needs an abortion can get one. Won't we get in trouble for this? Can you promise me you'll quit when we get married? We want to compile a list of doctors. Here you go. Literally everyone I know thinks I'm pregnant right now. Wait, which one of you is pregnant? It's not for us. Girls are awful organized, are you hookers? If doing something illegal, we should think like criminals. Here's how they do it. We'll have two locations, a place for the abortions and a front. Maybe it's time we get out of the shadows, announce that we're here. If you need volunteers, you can call me. We're up to 30 women a week now. Can I help you? You have to say you're not involved. I have to stick by everyone else. You lied to me! We're all criminals in this room, and that includes all of you. I feel like this whole time we've been pretending that we can just ignore the system and we'll never get punished, but it happened. We're caught. I was just waiting to regret everything, but I don't. Why don't I give you our number, and when you call back, you can ask for Jane. Is everything bullshit? Welcome to Cafe Abundance. I'm obsessed with this place. Coming into Cafe Abundance should feel like entering an oasis of positivity. The zucchini fries, they are like heaven. So do you have any questions? So having a running tally of every calorie I've eaten today, like I'm some stockbroker on speed, that's normal. Oh, the I am dazzling, does that come with soup palm? You are, and it does not. There's nothing wrong with a little positivity. We're not happy or empowered. I am awesome. I'm great. Ma'am, you need to sit down. Oh, no. I'm naked. An oasis of positivity. When I was very young, I don't think I ever saw any lesbians in film or popular culture, only in books. When I started 16 millimeter film, I was coming out. 
And it seemed like if we're experimenting with our lives and the way we're gonna live, that our film or our art form should also be experimental. I always felt like I need to talk about the things that I know about that I haven't quite heard being spoken about. For me, a lot of them were things that were scary. It was around the same time that I wanted to become a filmmaker that I was discovering this alternate sexuality, which brings me to this documentary and being an old gay. <laughs> there is this narrative or maybe truth to be in love with someone and for them to be in love with you is one of the holiest experiences you can have on this earth. I want to keep hanging out as friends. No, no, no. He loves me and he just doesn't know it yet. We're just going to keep hanging out and he'll figure it out. I don't think this is a good idea. Why not? Because you still like him. Yeah. You're being crazy. Like, actually out of your mind. I'm sorry, honey, but you're emotionally bankrupt. These are my thighs. The slender legs of my youth have gone. They've been surrounded. If I'm honest, I'm not really friends with my body at the moment. Or maybe we are friends, but we increasingly find each other annoying and just wish we didn't hang out quite so much. So I've decided I'm going to take on a series of small, low-key adventures with the hope of creating a bigger change. Oh. My goal is simple to seek out open water and swim in it oh my. at least once a month for a year. Ooh. What the bloody hell am I doing? This is something that comes through the contact form on my website. These are tweets threatening a convention that I was at. This word legitimate threat, who is thinking about what is legitimate? If a company says we want to make this a safe space and a user says this is not feeling safe and the company comes back and says oh you're exaggerating, that's not good. I can't even go outside and show my face to the world anymore. I can't go to school, I can't go to work because somebody has already seen me in the way that I don't want to be seen. Every time I give out my name, I know that I'm about to be judged because I know eventually they're going to Google me and they're going to see what's there and then they're going to judge me. They need to state their policy. They need to also inform the uploaders that they do not accept revenge porn. We're having conversations about civil rights today that are long overdue that mirror the conversations we're having about online spaces. I'm black and I'm a woman and there's no reason why that should make me less able to speak my voice and able to be heard. Women are losing out in every sense when it comes to the laws that we have to protect privacy, to protect against harassment. New York doesn't have a revenge porn law because our politicians are doing nothing about it. This was not what the First Amendment was about, and I'm willing to go in and try to fight anyone saying that it is. Can we get a picture with Please. you? Yeah. Oh, 
What I couldn't say is I'm angry. I'm angry that we live in a society where online harassment is tolerated, accepted, and excused. In all the different, messy, honest ways that we respond to harassment, we actually demonstrate how much humanity we all still have in the face of such cruelty and injustice. Let's make a pact that we will never be like any of them down there. Instead, we're gonna be something real. Something real. Sitting at the corn, me and Susie know. We ain't got no worries, we are looking like the odd. Now they can turn around. The party is also to an attack. The Sako Bank, a mortgage. Now the news on the Vitu Mill died too. Season of Vitu Kilam to attack again. Doesn't she just look like a proper woman? Look at you. You're nothing. You know exam results are out. I get to be a doctor. Yes. I can get a scholarship. Yes. What's your name, MCA? Kuna gani mama bado wanajua? Lakini kilicho ni shangaza. Kuna wa Kenya ambao kidogo wanaishtumu serikali kwa sababu ya msimamo wao wa ndoa ya jinsia moja. Just a typical Kenyan girl. Are you okay back there? Good. You're not gonna fall out the back door? Nope. Okay, watch it. We're going up a little hill. Don't fall out on the hill. Okay? Hold on to each other's hands. <laughs> We are encouraging relationships among women. It is a marvelous envisionment of a utopia that I've had in my mind since I was 18 years old when knew that I was a lesbian. That is that there could be a whole community of us who had understandings that were the same. An idea that there is community just with women. And would you like for me to hold the camera for you? <laughs> Years ago, a bunch of us friends were talking about wanting to grow old together in a community. For some reason, Oakmont has attracted this group of women. I love the fact that rainbow women exist. It's the lesbians. Oh, <laughs> you can be 32 miles from San Francisco, and it's another world out here, man. It's another world. I believe that as lesbians get older, our fear gets greater. I could knock you out in a second. <laughs> It is up to us to throw off those sort of negative beliefs about our lives and embrace our own path, be able to develop our own way of aging. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just caught our camera woman and she's smiling. <laughs> oh, she's on her knees. God, I haven't had a woman on her knees for me for a long time.